Welcome to the Kingdom for Charity Easter Edition 2015. It's the final day of the tournament. We have four players here fighting out for a share of $5,000. Competing for charity as well to raise money for Child's Play. Of course, you can see the total there of what we've raised to date for King Win, from King Win for Child's Play. 100% of all your donations do go to Child's Play, so make sure you check out the link below. Uh, I'm Calum Leslie, your host, and with me to cast these games is TJ ZMQT Sanders. TJ, we've had two days of absolutely amazing games, and we're down to four players who are really battling hard for this title. Yeah, definitely. Uh, first semifinal, of course, is going to be Chalky. Uh, versus Jab Tracky from T Team Dignitas, and of course Jab from Hearthlytics. Then of course we're going to round off the the second half of the semifinals with uh, Forsen versus Tides of Time. So two very exciting semifinals. We'll also have the third place match followed by the finals. And of course, unlike the other two days that we had, uh, today's going to be best of sevens. So uh, each player is going to have an additional deck. It's going to be longer series, more grueling series, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what these guys are going to bring out. Absolutely, and these de they can't change the three decks from yesterday, so they have to bring the same three decks they've used so far, plus an additional deck. So they don't get to change, uh, for example, they don't get to change to all get rid of Freeze Mage because Tides is bringing Mildurid, for example. Uh, we're going to see that later on, hopefully, some mil more Mildurid versus Freeze Mage action. Uh, we saw that in the Gara Tides of Time quarterfinal yesterday. Got, got pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, so we're going to have four matches for today, all best of seven. It is Conquest format, so they have to win with each of their four decks in order to advance. And I say they've got $500 each for making it this far to the semifinals, and the winner will walk away with two with 2500 and I think it's uh, 1500 for second place as well. So it's going to be a pretty pretty big deal for these guys to get to get this tournament it's uh you got to think if there's anyone who really wants to win these tournament i think it's uh it's got to be the person who wins this first semi-final these are two players who are super hungry to win a title chucky looking for his first tournament win came so close at the esl legendary series uh season one finals is looking for a first title for team dignitas as well and uh and jab as well probably has been around for a long time is a decent is a good streamer on team hearthlytics uh, really looking to, to stake a claim as a top pro player. This semi-final for me, this is the two hungriest players in the tournament. Yeah, I, I definitely agree there. And Chucky, you can tell that he wants to win because he's actually playing Priest. And I know we've given him um, we've given him a lot of crap for it over the past couple of days uh, for playing Priest and, of course, for, for saying that oh, his priest, he's saving it for last because he needs all three games to try and find a win with that priest, which has happened. But uh, it, you really can tell that he wants to win because he realizes that maybe bringing three aggro decks like sometimes he does is not the way to go. And so you can really tell that he wants it. And of course, Jab, player that not many people know too much about. He does stream quite a bit. I've watched his stream a lot. It's it's really cool to see, to see this guy play. He plays Hunter, but he... It's not like a mindless hunter. A lot of times he plays mid-range hunter. That's one of the decks that he's been ringing today. So uh, this first semifinal should be a good one. Yeah, so we're getting the classes coming through here. And uh, Jab is going to Druid, Hunter, and Warlock from yesterday. He's adding Warrior to his lineup. And Chucky is going with Mage, Priest, uh, Rogue, and Warrior. And I think it's the, uh, it's the Rogue which is added to Chucky's lineup. So the Rogue's going to be new. Uh, for Chucky and the Warrior is going to be new for Jab. I like the addition of Rogue to Chucky's lineup. I think Rogue's a really powerful deck. We've seen the impact that the Rogue can have. Uh, and that's actually, when you look at the two decks that the players have added, the Rogue and the Warrior, it, uh, I'd like the Rogue in the lineup, but actually the Warrior against the Rogue is a, is a better, lineup for the, better lineup for the Warrior. So uh, this could possibly go in Jab's favor. Yeah, and one of the decks that Jab actually struggled with so far was Freeze Mage. So that's, uh, yeah. I'm sure that's why he decided to bring Warrior. And also Chalky. Uh, Broke sort of just shores up his bad matchups across his other deck. The decks that Priest and Warrior do really well against, uh, like the faster decks, um, Broke doesn't do necessarily that that well. But the, the mid-range, the, the slower decks, Broke is just fantastic against. So um, these players, really smart deck choices. When you have four decks, you want to make sure that you cover all your bases, especially... Um, going going over the meta over the past couple days, uh, lots of Freeze Mage, lots of Zoo Warlock. Um, these guys definitely did their homework as far as making sure that their last the last deck that they brought for best of seven is a deck that's going to do them well uh, as far as the current meta goes. 
Yeah, I mean, I think Freeze Mage is probably the MVP of the tournament so far. It's just made such an impact in all the games that it's had. There's been so many series which have come down to Freeze Mage just having such a solid matchup against everything else. Uh, we saw the Freeze Mage mirror that broke the Blizzard EU servers yesterday. Hopefully we won't have any more of that today. Um, just look at the other semi-final quickly before we get uh, into Chaki versus Jab here. Europe has one last hope left in this tournament to avoid an all-American final. And <laughs> Europe's, the great white hope of Europe is forcing in the semi-final against Tides of Time. And Forsen uh, definitely obviously had the match against Oleg, which, you know, Oleg, not that well-known a player, wasn't exactly a terrible, you know, unfavorable matchup for for Forsen. But Forsen actually got his first ever competitive win against Tice from Team Nihilum uh, in the quarterfinal. That was a really, really close game. Came down to a, a phrase mage mirror, really, to decide the series. Uh, and Forsen was able to come out on top in that in that mirror match. But uh, Forsen, showing that he's certainly so, a force to be reckoned with in this tournament. If you can get a win over Tice, something you've never done before, Tice is one of the best players in the world, he's got to be taken seriously. Yeah, he, he's, he got a little help, of course, from the, from the EU servers. Um, <laughs> because Tice was, like, top decking it was something like five out of seven of his, I think, yeah. of his last cards something were like lethal. That. So he had a really good shot, but um, th those are things you can't predict. There was also a chance that Forsen could have top decked it next turn. It was a little bit lower of a chance, but uh, he still has a lot to prove because semifinals isn't enough. I, I know I know for sure. It's, semifinals for him is not enough. And so, maybe not for him, but semifinals for the Forsen boys is not enough. So uh, definitely, th that'll definitely be a... Uh, a good match as well. For the Forsen boys, it's either they either need glorious victory or spectacular defeat. That's what they need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, uh, yeah. So looking at our first semi-final here, Jab and Chaki. Uh, I really like Jab, honestly. I think he's definitely one to be. You know, all the players have worked hard to get here and have won good games to get here. We saw him beat Dog in the quarterfinal as well, which was a really good performance. We also saw him take our only 3 0, apart from the, the Chucky hyped quarterfinal, our only 3 0 of the first round. And the quickest series I think we've had in this entire tournament over Number Guy, which just shows how well Jab is, how versatile Jab is with his lineup. Bringing decks which maybe aren't necessarily his favorite, like Mid Range Hunter, and showing that the, those decks can be really relevant. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And he's bringing some fast decks. He's got Zoo Warlock. Uh, it's more of the mid-range Zoo Warlock. He's bringing different variations of fast decks. Mid-range Hunter, uh, mid-range Zoo Warlock. And people were sort of criticizing mid-range Hunter uh, currently. A lot of people say that Face Hunter is sort of the way to go if you're going to play Hunter. It's got a lot of stronger matchups. It's it's all the matchups that mid-range Hunter uh, do well against right now. Face Hunter has like a better matchup. Uh, against Zoo, it's it's slightly better because you can outrace in certain situations. Uh, against Rogue, it's a lot faster, so you're more likely to win in a race in that situation as well. So it's uh, but he's he's been making it work, and uh, he's had he's had some some clutch victories where you you, you look at the game and you're saying, oh well, um, if he was face time, he would have won like three turns ago. But then he ends up pulling it out. So I, I really like mm -hmm. that he's sort of breaking the hunter um, stereotype with with that deck. And he even had time to to beat the mid range beat the face hunter with the mid range hunter in the first game against Number Guy, That's true. which is a a pretty unfavorable matchup. So Jab certainly wants to be taken serious. As you said, his hunter play very formidable. He knows that deck inside out, and I'll be interested to see what kind of warrior he's brought here. I would expect it to be a typical control warrior, as you say, it uh, lines up really well against the Freeze Mage. Probably lines up quite well against the Grim Patron warrior as well, um, and can have a really good matchup against Priest. So and the Rogue deck. He also has a pretty good matchup against that as well. So Warrior's really strong against everything Chaki has here, including the deck that he's brought that's extra. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. So I, Jab may have won the mind games a little bit in the deck picking, I think, here, and yeah. bringing that fourth deck. The next level mind games where you have to pick without even knowing what your what deck your opponent even has. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, this is, of course, Kingwin for charity. So it wouldn't be Kingwin for charity if we didn't have a good charitable place for you to send your donation so child's play foundation um is a is a foundation that buys consoles uh buys games for children that have long-term illnesses in hospitals uh to make their stay there um and sometimes with terminal illnesses make their their last days uh a lot more enjoyable so you can see uh in the bottom left during some of the games we have that counter all the money that we've raised so far and we'd like to raise even more so head on the links down at the bottom of the stream and uh, make a donation to child's play foundation uh make those kids happy by allowing them to to play some games absolutely really great and once, we're, 
once we're finished here today, it's not long before you get some more Hearthstone action from Kingwin because the KPL is back next week, every week, uh, for the next few weeks until we conclude the regular season. From this week, it's moving to Tuesday and Wednesday. So 6 p.m. CET uh, on, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays with Noxious and Lothar. Going to be bringing you the matches from the KPL. Life Coach and Strife Crow are currently riding high. Hyped is doing very well as well. And we'll see who makes it to the playoffs and who's going to get relegated. Obviously, open qualifiers for the KPL to qualify for next season. So you could be competing in the KPL next season. It's going to be completely open for those bottom spots. So uh, that's going to be pretty interesting as well for the second season. And while you're here as well, Bill, don't forget to enter the raffle. It's uh, exclamation mark packs in the chat. We'll get you the link you need to enter a raffle to win 20 Hearthstone packs. That's oh, yes. That's a lot of packs. And TJ, TJ loves his packs. Yeah. So Some people like to drink coffee in the mornings when they wake up. Some people need to eat a, a nice big breakfast when they wake up in the morning. But the first thing I do when I wake up is I head over to my computer, I buy a pack, and I open it. And that's how I wake up every single morning. So 20 packs would be like you go to a buffet in the morning. It's Disneyland. A, a continental breakfast buffet. Yeah, Disneyland. Uh, one of those character breakfasts where the Disney characters come out to your table and they like you take pictures with them, they sign the autographs in that little book. That's what 20 packs would be like to me if I was a five-year-old kid. So make sure you exclamation mark packs. What do you mean if you were a five-year-old kid? 20 packs are going to be like that to you anyway. No, no, no. If I was a five-year-old kid at Disneyland. Oh, I see. That's how it. that's how packs, 20 packs is to me. So yeah. exclamation mark packs, it'll send you to a link. Uh, follow the instructions and be entered. And uh, just when you open that pack first thing in the morning, does that really set the tone for the whole day? Like if you get just your average garbage uh, 40 dust pack, you don't think, oh, this is going to be a great day. But if you get something like a golden card or a legendary, do you think, do you know what, today is going to be a great day? Yeah, just the pack alone makes it a good day. But if I get a golden, fantastic day. If I get a golden legendary, it's Go just, play the lottery. It's just Go buy a lottery more. ticket. Yeah, yeah. No, not not even. It's uh, a pack is basically my lottery ticket because I value <laughs> packs more than I value money. So getting a golden legendary in a pack is better to me than if I won like five thousand dollars or something. But if you won the lottery, you could afford an all golden collection. And you know how you get an all golden sure. collection? You have to open a crap ton of packs. Yeah, yeah. I actually have every card except for there's one legendary that I don't have, and I. It's Tickmaster Overspark because I disenchanted it to build another legendary when it got nerfed a long time ago. But that's the only legendary I don't own. Mm. I've got about, I think it's about 20, about 20 I don't have. And I'm a free to play player. Oh, look at that. That shows you play too much Hearthstone. It does. It does. But uh, yeah, so we're getting into this matchup. We're just waiting to see what, Chuck, what deck Chucky's going to lock in. We know Jab is going to lock in his Hunter, which is an interesting pick. I guess he thinks it's maybe a difficult matchup against... Uh, could be difficult against, against the Priest. Could be difficult... Will be difficult against the Freeze Mage. Uh, could struggle really against most of Chucky's lineups. So I think he just wants to get that mid-range Hunter win out of the way uh, and then move on to his fav more favorable decks. I was actually just reading on uh, on Reddit a post by Hodge, the player who won the Vi Game House Cup 2 has posted a, a long post with his thoughts on Conquest and really one of the key things that he said was pick your weakest deck first because you need as many opportunities to get a win with that as possible and you, it makes your lineup just so much more flexible. Yeah, that, that's it. That's, I talked about this a little bit yesterday, but picking your weakest deck first is um, almost always the best choice. And that's why you see players that pick their weakest deck first or one of their quicker decks first. Sort of the same concept. You want You want as many opportunities as possible to take a win with that. They keep picking it over and over again, because that's sort of the strategy. Because if you if you get your weakest deck out of the way first, even if it takes you two or best of seven three times, three chances to get a win. If your strongest decks are last, then it's okay if you ha if you need to win a lot more. So, or if you have three opportunities to to win with that deck. So well, it looks the, like Chuck is going to be the same strategy. He's going to open with the Priest. So it's going to be the Priest versus the Hunter. This feels like a pretty good matchup for Priest. We did see Chucky uh, open with the Priest in the quarterfinal, which I think was a better decision in the round of six, than in the round of 16. He decided to leave that till last. And he did kind of struggle to get that final win. He did get there in the end, but opening with the Priest definitely seems like a better strategy. And it plays really well against the mid-range Hunter. Yeah, yesterday he opened with the Priest and, and took that victory against Druid, and it was a really impressive victory. It's, it seemed like his Priest deck was unstoppable. 
which was a different story from day one of the tournament where he nearly got reverse swept trying to get a win with that priest. So Hunter versus Priest should be good. Absolutely. And we saw him get the win straight away with it yesterday. Obviously, three old hyped, but three old hyped, which I think was a, a really impressive performance. One of the best performances, I think, in the quarterfinals. Uh, George hyped Magazzini falling 3 0 to Chucky. Your, your, your friend, mentor, and idol, George hyped Magazzini. Yep, that is, that is correct. Maybe not mentor, but uh, I do learn a good deal from him uh, when, I, when I play Hearthstone. He's, he's an outside of the box thinker. He's not afraid to make the play that people will call stupid in order to to win the game. So, and you guys can't see it, but Chalky just took a sip of his signature Snapple. I believe it, he's going with the peach Snapple today. And of course, we talked about yesterday how he orders so much Snapple that when he looks in the cap, it's actually a fact about himself. It gives him a little confidence boost when he wakes up in the morning. Well, we're just waiting for these players to. Uh to get into the game. The game is just getting underway and we're just getting the uh, spectating set up. Let's say it's going to be the mid-range hunter for Jap versus the priest of Chaki. I remember priest being really popular on ladder around the time when uh, mid-range hunter was really, really strong. Yeah. Uh, around the time of the, when the Undertaker sort of started really taking over the meta. Um, and it was kind of a more aggressive version of the mid-range hunter. Priest was really, really popular as a counter. Yeah, Death Rattle Priest too was super popular. Because Priest ran quite a bit of death rattles. Like the, the turn one uh, Undertaker coin zombie chat was actually a really great opening for Priest. Because it allowed into them dark to... Cultist. Yeah, into Dark Cultist. But of course, only Zeta Lot's running death rattle Priest anymore. Everybody else is running with this this more standard version. Chalky, I when he was streaming, he called this deck Mind Control Priest just because of Shrink Meister. He runs du double Shrink Meister, double Cabal, double Shadow Madness, and a Mind Control. Is it double Shrinkmeister? Mm, I think so. Mm. Can't remember if we saw two Shrinkmeisters yesterday, but yeah, we do see the, the Shadow Madness, the Mind Control, and the Shrinkmeister all there in hand. He's, he's thinking about dropping the Shrinkmeister just as a two drop for some board control, and that wouldn't be the worst idea since the the Hand of Jab isn't that great in these early turns. He doesn't really have anything other than a web spinner to put on board, and obviously Jab has decided to, uh, neglected to do that in the first turn because it just dies to the North Shire, but Chucky actually establishing some pretty good early board presence here, and we, we could see a quick shot to take out one of these minions. It's possible. Um, Mid-range hunters in general don't have that many early drops. Uh, web Spinner, Haunted Creeper, Mad Scientist, is and like Iron Begal are usually the one and two drops that are commonly ran. Uh, Leper Gnome is sometimes run in mid-range hunter but usually not just because they need to make room for the bigger cards like sludge belcher piloted shredders Svenna high mains so i'm not actually sure what what other one and two drops he's he's going with but this is one of the people complaining about one of the inconsistencies of mid-range hunters that sometimes your opening hand isn't that great this is pretty bad here these power word shields would have gone on the north shark cleric which made it really which would have made it really hard for jab to deal with but now there's a 3-6 minion on the board. He's he's going to have to go ahead and silence that. I guess it's like a mini injured blade master at this point. He's going to have to silence it. He doesn't have any other any other option, really. Yeah, it's a wannabe injured blade master. One less power on, bo on both accounts. There isn't a, a huge amount for Chucky to do here. He can Shadow Madness and clear his opponent's board. He can Thought Steal. Uh, depends what he wants to do. I like Shadow Madness because you're also drawing a card effectively. Yeah, true. If you, you, know, you can take the web spinner and get the beast. Um, but he's not actually going to do that. He's just going to clear the web spinner and put the Ock and I down. Yeah. The, as, as flashy as Shadow Madness is, uh, having bodies like this and having the ability to ping things off uh, with that Ock and I Soul Priest every turn is actually pretty good. Uh, if you have board control, a lot of times you get in the Hunter matchup as a priest, you can't afford to ever play Ock and I unless it's a, like a a desperation scenario where you have to clear the board with Arcanai Circle, uh, but because you you have to be able to heal every turn. But throwing it out here when he's at thirty health and has board control and is just trying to hold on to it is a good good move. Sludge Belcher, great pickup for turn five here, just on curve. That's pretty much going to come straight down. I'm not sure how I feel about the freezing trap here. I guess it makes the Cabal Shrink Meister combo a little less potent, but being able to get that Shrink Meister back into hand might be something that Chucky doesn't feel too bad about. Um, opts not to proc it last turn. There's the Cabal here. 
could shadow her death, the lost to the toll strider. That feels a little bit inefficient. Mm, I don't mind it. Uh, the thing, the one thing he's thinking about is how do I deal with high main if it comes out? Um, yeah. So of course, thought steal first, uh, which. Oh, there's a kill command and a web spinner. That's pr that's, that's that's pretty great. Talking about how you deal with high main. Yeah, exactly. You can web spinner kill command shadow madness, and it deals with uh, eight mana. It deals with both iterations of, of high main if it were to come down. So I think shadow or death is okay because he has ways to deal with other things. It'll keep his taunt healthy as well. Uh, the only other thing he could do is kill command and trade in his strength monster, which I think he values this board just a little bit more than that. Yeah, I think so. I think you could actually see the Shadow of Death here. Lost Toll Strider is a weird card. Doesn't see too much play, obviously. It's uh, not the greatest vanilla card, but for Final Fantasy fans, it does remind, do remind me quite a lot of Chocobos from Final Fantasy, from my Final Fantasy playing youth. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fantasy games with things that are like Chocobos. I used to play this game called Ragnarok Online, which had these things called Pico Picos, or Peco Pecos, and you rode them. Oh. They were like giant chickens. They didn't have quite a long necks. I think the Lost Tall Strider is like an ostrich. It's modeled after an ostrich. Yeah. Ostriches I'm are really mean. Right. <laughs> Confirmed. Well, there's the Knife Juggler Snake Trap. And uh, Chad will be hoping to get some favorable from that. But that's actually the first damage he's been able to do to Chucky's face. Turn six, first time he's been able to hero power... Chucky's probably in a pretty good position here and avoiding the snake trap by using the shadow madness. He thinks it's freezing trap. Well, there, there oh, is a, there is a freezing trap, okay. So, yeah, he's going to be able to steal the knife juggler here with freezing trap, which, that's pretty good. Pretty so, good. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah. And this, this sludge belch is so problematic for Jab. He used the owl earlier on on the shrink meister. You can see there is a second Shriekmeister in hand, so does, in fact, run two Shriekmeisters. You were correct, TJ. I'm not sure how I feel about throwing the Web Spinner out. I think probably wanted to keep the Web Spinner for Kill Command activation. I don't think at this point he's really too worried about it. Because um, he can... Chances are that Web Spinner won't die, but it actually does die, so uh, I guess that's negated. But, it, I mean, Jab is still in so much trouble. Chucky thinks he might not even need it. He gets Silverback Patriarch from from the Web Spinner. That's another taunt that he can throw in the yeah, way. There we it's go. not terrible, actually, against the Hunter, because it can actually cause the Hunter quite a lot of problems. But we're going to see just another board get built up from Chucky here. He's got the Knife Juggler in hand, has the Shriekmeister Cabal. Uh, wouldn't even need the Shriekmeister if the Haunted Creeper comes down, but... Oh, and the Sludge Belcher. That's a perfect Shriekmeister Cabal target. Yeah. Really oh, dangerous. Yeah. oh no! This is gonna be this is gonna be game over for Jab here. Yeah, um, I wouldn't be surprised if he just went ahead and <laughs> conceded see, after yeah, that yeah, one because yeah, yeah. that's totally. pretty that's pretty rough. Let's see his, see what his face looks like here. And people talk about uh, not running double Shrink Master double Cabal because of its inconsistencies, uh, but the com combo is actually pretty consistently used in a lot of matches that we see with it like any type of long match as long as it's not super aggro then you usually have time to use it strength master cabal because there's a lot of targets i mean sludge belcher piloted shredder is is either sludge belcher or piloted shredder is running nearly every single deck so yeah we've seen it used in two out of the three priest games that we've seen from chalky so far and in both games it gave him such a huge advantage well, we did see Jab go ahead and concede there. If he hadn't conceded, what we'd have seen next turn is uh, Mind Control of the Savannah High Main, and that definitely would have been the concede. Yeah. So, Jack's going to go to a 1-0 lead. His Priest is locked out, leaves him with the Mage, the Warrior, and the Rogue. Um, we'll see what Jab decides to continue with here. I think he probably will continue with the Hunter and just try and get that first win with it, which is pretty good for Chucky. I think he may may opt to go with the freeze match early on but may try to keep that he's in fact going to go with the grim patron warrior deck uh which i was going to say was probably another option to go up against this mid-range hunter two grim patron warriors in the semi-finals one from forsen and one of course from chalky and they're both two really different flavors of grim patron warriors forsen um his is a little bit more inconsistent with its combos he runs dread corsair he runs commanding shout um but he can make 
It's more inconsistent, but he can make bigger combos. Chalky runs the more sort of reliable Grim Patron Warrior deck, uh, where he runs just an absurd amount of card draw with with um, like Battle Rage and um, I think actually maybe even Loot Hoarders were in that deck. I I can't remember whose deck that was that was that was running those, but it, it's got a lot of um, more reliable creatures that you can play easily more easily on curve as opposed to Dread Corsair. So I'm curious to see whose Grim Patient Warrior is better. We might get to see it later on, uh, but Chucky has had sort of an easy time with this Grim Patient Warrior. The stars have sort of aligned in both games that he's played so far. I'm waiting for this deck to get challenged a little bit more and to see what it can do when it falls behind or doesn't get the draw draws that it needs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're actually going to see a Warrior Mirror match here. Jab's going to go for his Warrior, which... Uh... I would guess this is a more standard control warrior just because it lines up better. And I think this is a really interesting challenge for the Grim Patron Warrior. So how does it stack up against an opponent who can build up a huge amount of armor and get out of range of those insane combos? Well, the the thing about Grim Patron Warrior combos is they're not like one turn kill combos. So the armor doesn't actually do anything. The only card that warriors have that effectively deals with Grim the uh, board full of Grim Patrons is Brawl. And everything else sort of works against the warrior because the, what they usually use to clear big boards is like uh, their despite and killing something having the despite death rattle go off and then executing it which doesn't work because that's just going to give him more grim patrons so i'm not actually sure how this deck works i've actually played a lot of both of these decks mm -hmm. but i've never met the other deck What's really interesting there is actually you saw in jab's mulligan he mulliganed away a brawl and got brawl straight back and i don't know if that means He's maybe running double brawl. He may. I mean, it, it's entirely possible that he built. I, I'm that you know he built this in. With well, if, this, he, uh, if he mulliganed one away, then and it's the first card in his hand, then he has to be running two. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna get double. We're gonna see double brawl here, and that's uh, pretty. That's a pretty pretty astute pick, I think, against this deck. Like you say, brawl being the only card that can deal with a, a big board of grim patrons. It's also fantastic against. Well, most of the time, it's fantastic against Zoo as well. So. Uh, it it really does um, um, good things in the current meta is, is I guess the, yeah. the way to put it and I guess it, it kind of get, puts your opponent on the back foot a little bit as well because when you brawl once they can often think okay well that's brawled out of the way and uh, that means that you know I can refill the board and not have to worry about brawl again but if you're running double brawl you can hit that second wave and once you clear their second board in a lot of aggro decks that's really problematic for them to come back from yeah. So he actually goes ahead and throws out the big game hunter right off the bat. And uh, if this was against another, a control mirror matchup, then that would have never happened. But he knows that there's not really many big game hunter targets. Uh, a lot of Grim Patient Warriors actually run Dr. Boom and Grom Hellscream. Those would be the only two BGH targets that you'd use. And a lot of times, some, some players cut Dr. Boom. Um, and a lot of times, by the, if Dr. Boom can come out on an empty board and you don't have a way to deal with Dr. Boom, you've probably lost anyway. Exactly. So Death Spite's up for either side here, and that Death Spite from Jab is going to prevent the Frothing Berserker coming out. It's actually really going to prevent anything coming out uh, from Chucky's. Guess he's kind of considering which what he wants to sacrifice here. But he's going to go with the Inner Rage. Um, that's going to cause a little bit more damage to Jab's face as well if he takes, wants to take out this 5-2. Yeah, I think he's going to nearly be forced to use the first brawl here yeah quite possibly so four grim patrons yeah brawl, coming out already brawl put plus kill yep. the other grim patron yeah this this deck might be tailor-made for to play against grim patron warrior because what you have to do is basically make a deck that counters every other player that's in the semifinals. and notice there's a lot of freeze mage and a, and two grim patron warriors so he's thinking, what deck should I add to my lineup that does well against those? Well, Control Warrior with Double Brawl is is great against Freeze Mage and great against Grim Patron Warrior. So that's a fantastic choice. And Zoo as well. There's there's quite a bit of... Uh, is there a lot of Zoo? There's a Zoo from Jab. I think there might be a Zoo from... Yeah, there's a Zoo from Tides as well. It's not as good against Zoo because Control Warrior can still sometimes have... Zoo can sometimes still have blowout matches against Control Warrior, but... Um, it, it's still the majority of decks that he's going to be facing in the semifinal. Control Warrior does really great against. So, absolutely. So, 
this is a really, kind of a difficult position for Chucky. He's, there's still a Death Spite charge from Jab, so any minion he plays here is going to get taken out. Um, Gorha was interesting for Chucky. I don't know if we'd seen that card in the deck to this point. Um, that's, yeah, that's kind of an interesting pickup, I guess, to give him a bit of clearing power. But he's going to go with the Frothing Berserker. And that is just going to die straight away, unfortunately, for Chucky. He has to get that Death Spite charge out of the way at some point, though. Yeah, exactly. Um... I, I really like the Gorhal. You can see the evolution of Grim Patient Warrior decks since the beginning. Gorhal is the one weakness that Grim Patient Warrior has is just the lack of of clear. Like they if they need to draw into a certain piece of their combo, they need to draw into a Grim Patron ways to activate the Grim Patron and Warsong Commander. And Gorhal buys them time, which is the biggest thing. It allows them to clear the board turn after turn. It allows them time to draw into those combo pieces. So it makes a lot of sense. Exactly. So you see the Gorhal taking out the Dr. Boom here. It could take out a Shield Maiden pretty easily next turn as well. Uh, there's also a Gorhal for Jab. So could just see Julian Gorhals here. Actually, don't, I don't mind that at all either, actually. Just put up a weapon and say, you know, I'm going to clear whatever you've got. But he goes with the Shield Maiden. Building up the armor can be pretty useful as well. Yeah, this is actually going to be pretty tough because Alex Raza plus Grom with a way to activate is going to come out over the next three turns. So, plus Gorhal as well. All Jab has to do right now is play just ultra defensively until he can get that combination out. He has every piece that he needs in his hand to win the game. He, he literally could win the game without any more cards. Yeah. He just needs what he's got in his hand. Exactly. Yeah, so he's going to play defensively next turn possibly the shield block, maybe even to see the Gorhal come up yeah. uh, next turn to deal with whatever comes out. If something like the Unstable Ghoul comes out. Yeah. I think the Gorhal is a pretty good pick up, a pretty good way to, to stall out until Alex Straza and defend the board and stop your opponent being able to really play anything. Um, okay, so he goes with the Warzone Commander here. Yeah, this is a pretty unfavorable position for Chucky, and that's losing the Warzone Commander is pretty unfortunate. Yeah, I... I think he traded in first because he was trying to think. Um, he was trying to plan out his play. He was. I think he was either going to play Raging Morgan or go for a Battle Rage play. He was hoping that the Warsong Commander would get damaged and so that he'd get three draws from Battle Rage. But still, two draws for, for two mana is actually really good. It's like an Arcane and the like, but better. Oh, that bomb goes to face for one. That's definitely not what Jab was looking for. Probably I... wanted to kill off this unstable goal. Yeah. You can just develop a weapon here, Alex draws the next turn, then he'll have exactly uh oh he'll have thirteen damage the following turn. That's if Alex Shaza dies, which Oh, there's cool task as well, that's really useful. So yeah, I think we see War Axe, we see Shield Block, maybe even Armor Smith here, just to go full defensive, clear what's on the board. I kinda like the Armor Smith first there. They got some extra armor on, but It really it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. He's got so much armor and he knows that the armor smith is just going to die anyway. It's just really to get another charge of the Gorhal out. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to eat another charge from the Gorhal. And Chuck is going to try and draw some cards here with Whirlwind and Double Acolyte. But he's really in a terrible position here. Jab actually does, yeah, it doesn't really need Alex at this point in, in some ways. What does he have? He has 15 with the Fire War X and the Grom Cool Taskmaster combo. Mm -hmm. So he's one away from just not even needing Alex Straza. Uh, next turn he can make some big plays. Um, if he can Whirlwind with the Grim Patron. He's actually got Grim Patron Whirlwind Execute, so um, he can actually put on some pressure, but he has to be really careful. Jab also has a lot to think about here. He has to think about, can I play Alex Straza here and be saved? He's got 33 health, so he's thinking yes, but if he plays Alex Straza here, He's basically saying that I'm giving up my axe so the fastest I can kill him is over two turns and that can give him enough time to come back in the game. Yeah, for that reason I think part of me kind of likes the Gorhal here. Uh, killing one of the kill one of the Acolytes and then equip the Gorhal because that does give you that defensive uh, weapon that you can use to kill next turn. You can actually even just then use it to face and it's enough with the, with the Grom Kill Taskmaster to win the game. I would like Sylvanas to be honest. Sylvanas protects you against 
just about anything because you can steal whatever comes out on the board. Um, Alex Straza really doesn't have much of an effect here aside from putting yeah. eight in on the board, which in that case, Sylvanas might be even better in that situation. But yeah, Gorhal is going to come out. The thing about Gorhal is it's <clears throat> it's actually really slow. Um, so he's effectively just clearing off the Acolyte this turn and not doing anything else. Just opening up so, a, a little bit of additional mana for him next turn. But he does have Lethal lined up. Yeah, he's, he does that amount for Lethal as well. And unless Chucky can deliver 32 damage here, with his, he does have Warstone Commander and Grim Patron, Inner Fire, Whirlwind. The options do exist. I don't think, no. There's some pretty big combos. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know how much damage enough. you can totally do. Um, eight plus three is eleven. You can only do nineteen yeah. damage, I think, with with War raging Morgan. Um, Warsaw Commander Grim Patron would only allow him to. Yeah, he's dead. I think he can do twenty, but yeah. Yeah, so you can get four Grim Patrons out here. It's too late. But, yeah, it's not doesn't have the... He didn't have the Warzone Commander, <laughs> so he can't even attack. Um, yeah, so that's going to be game. Jab's going to take this with the Gorhal straight to face. Uh, quite unusual to see a Gorhal used in that way, but in this situation, it's effective. Grown Cruel Taskmaster is going to be enough to seal this out. So Jab is going to level it up one-to-one -one and lock out his Control Warrior. Chucky is going to have other opportunities to win with this Grim Patron Warrior, but he just he had to use his jab did really well to get his death bites early and control the board mm -hmm. to stall Chucky out from being able to play things like his Frothing Berserker and the you know not be able to actually really use them to any effect. Mm -hmm. And uh Chucky just used up too much of his resources that even when he was like was able to draw into the combo pieces, he didn't have any way of, of coming back. I thought it was at 19 health. <laughs> that's awkward. Um but yeah, it's that's the brawl there in the opening hand, even though he threw away the first brawl, is probably what won him the game. Imagine what would happen if he didn't have brawl in that situation. He had, a death, five. He had a death bite equipped. He could only kill one of the Grim Patrons, and then the following turn he could only... He could, he wouldn't have been able to kill any, because if he killed one, he would have just summoned more. And having a board full of Grim Patrons and not having a way to deal with them, and giving the, the, the Grim Patron Warrior a fresh turn right after that, it's pretty much a death sentence because that allows them to play the Warsong Commander and just start getting everybody in here and um, just start going to phase, putting on some damage. Uh, but I mean, <clears throat> at the end there, he was thinking there's nothing that that Warrior can do to gain health. I'm at 33 health. I don't think with 10 mana and that many cards in his hand, there's any way that he could one turn kill me. So equipping the Gore Howl, waiting for the 19 damage burst on the following turn is exactly the play that he needed yeah so we're going to see these players change decks both once again we're going to see jab go to the warlock and chucky's going to go to his freeze mage uh, as i say we know this is uh, a zoo deck but it also runs malganis it runs dr boom um, i think it might run sylvanas but it also runs bane of doom uh which can be a really impactful card we'll see if that has it if that uh swings the match here you know the turn five malganis can be that's that's pretty good that feels not too bad <laughs> not too bad yeah Unless you get to BGH, then it actually feels kind of bad. Yeah, that's but, true. Uh, that true. Still, that's that's. I don't think there's BGH in the Freeze Mage. It's true. That's something that you can't really account for. So um, this, we've seen this matchup be sort of a toss-up so far, in in the charity event over the course of the weekend. We've actually seen I think probably five, maybe even six, the Zoo versus Freeze Mage, and they've gone either way. I think it's in the advantage of the Zoo. Just because Zoo has so much burst, they can pop the block early. Um, a lot of times, the, the Freeze Mage will be so worried about clearing the board early on that they won't have time for card draw. Uh, they won't have time to draw into their burn quick enough before the, the Zoo Warlock can just uh, win the game. Yeah, this isn't a great hand for Jab, though. It does have the, it has a Mortal Coil, which is all but useless in this matchup, apart from a few situations. The Dire Wolf isn't a great two draw by itself. Void Collar, it's going to be hard to, to get that killed off to pull something in. And this isn't actually a bad hand for Chucky. It does have the Frostball, the Mad Scientist, gets his, his first block, and being able to play that first block on a safe turn is pretty important. But Jab picks up a, a Void Walker there and an Imp Gang boss, so he is starting to fill up his hand with some, some useful cards. 
having to tap <laughs> on turn one when you need to be putting on pressure early is not the greatest thing in the world but this is that slower variation of zoo it's the more mid-range demon demon zoo mid-range demon zoo yeah and so uh, he has a little bit uh, bigger creatures and he has a little bit more time for himself especially playing against freeze mage that's a card that could be an MVP coming into the hand there for Chucky, the uh, Antique Heal Bot, which is kind of a flavor pick in Freeze Mage. Some people play it. We saw, I think we saw Gara play it as well uh, yesterday, but we didn't. We don't see all the Freeze Mage players playing it. It's dropped in favor of things like Explosive Sheep or Cone of Cold. But in this matchup, it could do really well to, to stop your block getting popped, to prevent block poppage. Prevent and block poppage. It's, I'm going to make a band called that. Is that going to be your Hearthstone boy band? Yeah. Block poppage? It's be it was between block poppage and foodie time. You know, Crip, when Crip eats, foodie time? Because Crip's in the band, of course. Oh, of course. Of course he is. He's like the older brother figure that's in the band. He's the one that, that picks everybody's spirits up when, when someone has girl trouble or when we have a bad performance on stage. Crip's the guy that's always there. So naming the band foodie time... <laughs> after him I think it would be good well Jab gets the, uh, the f gets the four roll from the implosion and can kill off this doom guard here gets to use his mortal coil as well which is pretty important being able to cycle that uh, he's not going to have many opportunities to do that in this matchup yeah oh blizzard this is a, actually a pretty decent hand um, the, the one thing that was interesting about this freeze mage is that it ran the anti heal bot we've seen a few anti kill bots so far in Freeze Mage, and I'm a little bit torn on it because I I'm not sure what they actually cut for it. But Ice Barrier sort of serves the same purpose; it just costs less mana. It's and it's easier to use. Anti kill bot does put out the body as opposed to Ice Barrier, um, but Freeze Mage has a lot of really important cards, some crucial cards, and I'd, I'd be curious to see what they actually cut for anti kill bot in in that case. Yeah, and the freeze is pretty rough here with the six minions on board. There's really nothing you can do to kill this Doom Series. This is just going to be a pass turn for Jab here. Well, unless he wants to go with the Nerubian Egg. I mean, he can Doom Guard. Hope he doesn't discard both Abusive Sergeants. Also, hope he doesn't discard Malganus. I think that's a little bit too risky. I think he just he's just going to throw out the Egg here. I like the Egg. Yeah, I think it's a a good answer. Tap and play the Egg seems like a safer play, but at the same time, I mean. This is exactly how Freeze Mage wins. They continually stop your momentum and until you just don't have anything left or you're, you're forced to play clunky things from your hand. But yeah, it looks like Egg is going to be what's played here. And uh, Chucky does need to start drawing. He needs to, to, to draw into um, more Freeze or um, more Burn. Because right now he can't kill him. Oh, there's something. He's got 15 damage right now so in his hand. Yeah, it's not. It's quite a bit of damage, and the zoo is getting a little bit low. And this is actually something that could be a bit of a liability against freeze mages if they can pick up their burn really, really early, and you don't manage to do any damage significantly and pop, pop that block. Block poppage is all important, but you can see that uh, Jab is pretty far from being able to pop the block right now. He's in fact got th got to do thirty five damage, and not tap too often to put himself into like double fireball frostbolt range it's actually pretty hard to see how jab can win this match right now the zoologs that actually run malganis i think in so far in this tournament had 100 percent win rate against freeze mage freeze mages usually plan their burst so that they'll they'll plan kills a couple turns in advance and malganis basically just stops those plans Melganus is, they have to use Burn on that. They have to use Fireball Ping, which can completely change the course of the game if Melganus comes out in that type of situation. So, Yeah, absolutely. You always have to be keeping that in the back of their mind. And that's one of the reasons why Jab, uh, even though he's got a lot of cards in his hand, they're not high quality cards. And he's not afraid to tap because he knows that when he realizes the mage is starting to set up lethal and using his Burn to try and set up lethal, he can, he can just play Melganus and it will buy him at least one turn. Yeah, that's very true. So he's just piling on the power here. He's thinking of a double abusive sergeant just to try and do as much damage as possible. 
So he's actually even thinking about power overwhelming. I'm I don't mind power overwhelming here. I think you're pretty certain that this board's gonna get frozen or flame striked or something next turn. So using the power overwhelming just to push in damage when you've got two in hand, I I don't think that's a terrible decision, but he's gonna go with a double abuse of sergeant. So that's gonna chip away the, the health a little bit. Yeah. There's the Alex Straza. Couple of turns away from that. I don't think use in most aggro matchups, Alex Straza is usually a defensive tool. Um, just because they have a, a finite amount of damage. At least against Face Hunter, that's usually the case. Um, against Zoo, though, yeah, it's usually used defensive against Zoo because they get themselves to 15 health by themselves. Like, they, you don't even need to use Alex Shaws on them because usually by the time Alex Shaws would come out, they're near 15 health anyway. And you have enough burn at that point. So Alex Shaws just uses that tool to buy yourself maybe one more turn. Or when they're setting up for lethal to maybe put yourself out of range a little bit. But uh, Blizzard here is, is pretty good. It still summons a 1-1 one, one imp. It doesn't clear the whole board. And he doesn't really have a way to follow it up. Because it takes up his whole mana. He can't like ping off the Nerubian. He's still going to be faced with the big board next turn. So anti-killbot might be the choice. I think he wants something to be able to combo up with it. Yeah, I mean, we could just see the Freeze Mage outlast the zoo here with the anti kill bot and the Alexstrasza. Uh, it's just so much healing as well to be able to, to get on top of that. Alexstrasza, anti kill bot, anti kill bot now, or Alexstrasza later on. This is, uh, okay, it's going to go with the Blizzard. I, I do like the Blizzard. It takes seven power off the board. It takes you a little bit further away from having the block popped because you haven't seen, you don't have your Mad Scientist, you don't have your second block in hand, so you do need to be aware of when you know when this block gets popped how am, I, how am i going to be able to get my second block out and at the moment he doesn't actually have any way of doing that so he's just going to put more he, power on he needs to be careful now how often he taps he needs to start calculating how much damage can come from the hand um again like i said he can tap a little bit more liberally just because he has melganus as sort of an insurance card if he yeah, sees I mean, burn start to come out he can be pretty confident that Malganus will buy him a few turns. Uh, this seems like a um, Acolyte, King Acolyte turn. He's afraid though. He doesn't. He doesn't want the block to be popped. That's the one thing that he's worried about. He's worried about um, having his block popped without another block in his hand. So let's say he Acolyte pings and doesn't draw into anything that helps him control the board. Like he doesn't draw into Frost Novo or Second Ice Barrier. There's 7, 8, 9, 10, 13 damage staring at him on board. Jab would have to have uh, 9 damage from hand in order to kill him. And he's thinking, how easily can 9 damage come from hand? It's not that easy. You have to have double power warming plus something else. Um, but uh, Malganus would... No, that wouldn't quite be it. Because he wouldn't have mana for Malganus as well as power warming. Yeah, I mean, obviously the worst thing Chucky could do here would be to just try and get... Oh, no! I was just about to say, I think this may be Chucky's less good option is putting some damage in. He's going to go for the Fireball Frostbolt ping and just try and get Jab low to the point where Fireball and ping next turn would be it. But I was going to say, I, you know, I assume Chucky's done his homework and knows that Malganus is in the deck. So if Malgan Malganus is going to come out here... I should yeah. Go, oh. <laughs> Malganus has to come out here, surely. Yeah, he might be thinking of a cheeky move that he can make with like power overwhelming on his void caller and playing Doom Guard, but that's way too risky because he risks um, discarding oh, the void walker. So he's not going to be able to pop the block, which he was trying for a second to find a way if he could pop the block and play Malganus, but it's just not possible. Um, but now Chucky's in a lot of trouble because his block is going to be popped next turn, no matter what. So he has to fireball ping the Malganus and just play his Acolyte of Pain and hope that in his next two draws, he draws into either Ice Block or Pyroblast. Or his next two draws are, are, are Frostbolt Ice Lands. Yeah. Those are really he, the only two ways that he's going to be able to win this game. Exactly. And yeah, I really, really don't like the Fireball Frostbolt Ping play that last turn. I think, it, like you say, just betrays how much burn you've got in your hand and it gives you have the perfect opportunity to play Malganus. But if you think about it, what other plays did he have? Well, I think he could, have, he could have healed up. He could have used his Acolyte to draw and try and draw into enough burn to finish the game or to even just work his opponent down over a couple of turns because he had yeah. heal. 
he was afraid he he was on a clock either way and either way he's getting the same amount of draws this way he just gets a chance to win the game a pretty good chance to win the game i like this i like the bane of doom when oh and there is illidan really it doesn't matter that much <laughs> just because he only needs one damage on the board to pop the block even if Al i guess if alex Straza came out no if alex Straza came out he would still have enough damage but it's style points yeah, he's got double power overwhelming and Doomguard in the hand. He's got 14 damage in the hand. Uh, there is an another Frostbolt, but that's not going to be enough. <sighs> well, he could Frostbolt his own mad scientist and hope for Ice Block. The Force in play. Yeah, I think Acolyte Ping is the play here. Um, he can Acolyte Ping, and then as an emergency, he if he draws into Ice Lance, he wins. And then as an emergency, he can Frostbolt his own mad scientist. And hope that he gets ice block instead of second ice barrier, and then draws ice lands the next turn. And that no, he wouldn't. That wouldn't do anything because he'd already have frostbolt his his own. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. He would have to draw power blast. Oh, okay, I, this is this. Yeah. No, he can't arcane intellect because no, whatever he have enough mana. Unless he draws. Well, actually, it's how likely he thinks he'll draw, be able to draw into ice lands, but it's not very likely. This is the play. We'll see what secret he gets. What is it going to be? We didn't see what the secret was. I think from his face, it's Ice Barrier, though. Yeah. Ice yeah, barrier. it's Ice Barrier. So, unfortunately, that's going to be it. That's, uh, that's Jab rough. has enough to pop the block. He's going to see here that it's Ice Barrier. And that's going to be gain over three going over to Jab. Yeah. That was a pretty close one, though. Big Sock Chuck not getting the breaks that he needs. But uh, <laughs> Jab played that well. Um, he, he knew that he could tap as much as he needed to. He knew that he, he sort of wanted to try and bait out all that burn and then stall the game out with Mulganis because he knew he'd have to use burn on Mulganis. And I mean, Chalky, you, you, he probably he might have been able to heal. He might have been able to throw out the Accolade and try and draw. But if you think about it, he really didn't have many options aside from going for the win. He thought Mulganis has to be in the first 15 cards in his deck or else I just win the game next turn. So uh, you, you can't really fault him for that risk because... Either play was a risk, going for the other one was risking having his block pop the next turn and then not having a second block in his hand, so most likely losing the game. Uh, but that's just a situation. A lot of times it just comes down to how fast the zoo can kill him compared to how fast the mage can draw into enough burn. Yeah, it's one of those marginal calls in Freeze Mage. Uh, you know, ne neither were necessarily the right or wrong call. It was just which line of thinking do you go down? Obviously, the Malgan is being there. I mean, that, the, the one that he chose get punished, but it could have gone the other way. So we'll see what these guys are going to pick. We know that the Druid and the Hunter are still up for Jab. He could go back to his Hunter or go to his, his Druid, uh, whereas Chucky has the Grim Patron Warrior, the Freeze Mage, and the brand new Rogue to go for here. I'd like to see Jab go back to the Hunter. I think the Druid is probably one of his best matchups against Freeze Mage. So I think you want to try and dodge Midrange Hunter versus Freeze Mage. Um, and at the point where... Ch Chucky really, I don't think he wants Chucky will want to go for the Freeze Mage again because he kind of has a 50 50 of a good matchup or a really tough matchup. So I think Chucky's likely probably going to go to the Rogue, I think, or maybe even back to the Grim Patron Warrior. But I'd be surprised to see him pick Freeze Mage here, which for me makes it pretty, pretty clear that I think Jab should pick the Mid Range Hunter. Or am I overthinking this, TJ? We'll have to see. You might be overthinking a little bit. A lot of times, it's players tend to stick with the same decks unless they overthink it as well. Um, These players are switching a lot, though. They yeah, haven't that's played true. the same deck twice so far. Uh, most most players will stick with the same deck, but these guys have switched it every time. Every time they've lost, so it, it's really hard to predict. The matchups aren't that much different. Uh, I think Freeze Mage has just a big of a chance to beat Midrange Hunter as it does to beat um, Druid. Druid has a lot of tools as well to beat. Uh, they're, they're both like the same sort of speed if you think about it in the long run. Um, but Chucky's going to play Rogue and Jab is going to play Druid. Well, so ja yeah, Jab's going to play Druid. Chucky's going to go for the Rogue. So this is actually going to be, uh, in game number four, we're going to see the, la the last deck from these two players that we've not seen yet in this matchup. So they're going to have played all four of their decks uh, by game number four, but obviously no one's going to get the win here. So it's kind of interesting. It's actually, I think, the first time I've seen this in Conquest where... You get four games of them just playing different decks every time. 
uh, without it finishing the matchup. So I think that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And I'd expect this to be a pretty standard oil rogue from Chucky. Yeah, there's not really many variations of rogue that you can say. And you can see on your screen now. There's Mulligans. Uh, Ragnaros coming out from Jab. Rag, Rag has been uh, put in Druid a lot now. It's actually been uh, a common replacement for uh, Scenarius. Yeah. Uh, just because it's better against a lot of decks. Uh, Rogue is better. Sorry, Scenarius is. Ragnaros is better than Scenarius against Rogue. It's better than Scenarius against Freeze Mage. Um, and it's better than Scenarius against, like, Grim Patron Warrior which are three decks that you're going to find a lot. So there is some players that still run both, but a lot of people are just completely subbing out scenarios and, and putting in Rag in its place, which I really like. I think it's unlikely we'll see scenarios and Rag, given that we see Double Force of Nature. Um, means it's definitely a much quicker deck. We're likely, we've got the Doctor Boom, obviously Double Ancient of Lore. You don't want to have too many things at that top end when you've already got Double Force of Nature. And Jab getting that Double Force of Nature in hand is pretty unfortunate early on. Um, he can coin Shredder this turn, but then it just dies to Deadly Poison, and that's that's really, really unfortunate. So not a good start for Jab. Yeah. Volley Teachers with preps is just incredible. It's a, an incredible <laughs> hand for uh, for Rogue. The only thing that he needs is, is a little bit more card draw to refill his hand, because double prep, you can empty your hand really quick and not notice. Uh, he also has preps combined with Edwin Van Cleef, so you can make a big Edwin Van Cleef, which can sometimes... Druid, it's it's actually pretty easy to deal with because they have BGH usually, plus Keeper. Uh, but at the same time, sometimes it's it's worth it to make a risky play early on um, with Edwin Van Cleef, just because if it gets silenced, you're okay with that. But if it doesn't, then you pretty much just win the game. This is a pretty good aggressive play from Chucky here. Going with the Violet Teacher and the Blade Flurry to clear out that uh, Acidic Swamp Ooze. And we do see a swipe in hand for Jab, so he can kind of deal with this, but it's really unfortunate he doesn't have any way to finish off the Violet Teacher. Yeah. He may just have to silence it. Mm, he has swipe, so I don't know if he really cares about silencing that much. Because he's going to be able to deal with the 1-1s no matter what. Pilot Shredder might be the might be the best play here. Preemptive swipe is not that good because you're not going to be able to clear off the whole thing. Um, so, and silencing just, it, you know you're going to be able to deal with whatever creatures come out of it next turn if he makes a big turn. So I like the uh, Paladin Shredder better. Yeah, I'm never a fan of things like swipe or just any kind of preemptive damage hoping to kill it next turn, particularly against Rogue because you know that it's really likely they run Earth and Ring Farseers. So if you were to swipe the Violet Teacher last turn and it got Earth and Ring Farseered, he'd be so far behind. Yeah, well, also, I mean, I don't know. It'd just be a really... Because you'd be able to refill the one once anyway. It just wouldn't yeah. make any sense. It would well, make no sense. He pretty much goes all in. <laughs> I mean, you say pretty much all in. He played all of his cards and filled his board. Oh, and that's really unfortunate. The, the Noyatron. I don't know if it's that unfortunate, because he would have traded in probably one or two of these one ones anyway. He's not really missing much damage, and this way he's still... Is, he doesn't have to take much face damage. He's still not bringing himself in range of combo. Um, but now he's going to have to do this over two turns. He's going to have to silence and then swipe over two turns. Yeah. But Chucky needs a sprint. If he doesn't draw a sprint in his next two, three cards, the game's probably over. He's just out of oomph. He needs to just like all in right now, which is just really risky. Yeah, I mean, that's what he's going to go for. He's going to go with the poison and, I guess, trade one of the 1-1s. One um, it's really weird when you're watching Spectator mode, you see the green go away from around the minions. You know they've queued up an attack, but you haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. So you kind of get... You kinda get it takes some getting used to to see what's going on with Spectator mode. We see a second Keeper there. But yeah, he's going to swipe and use the Hero Power, finally get rid of this Violet Teacher. But that Violet Teacher's done quite a bit of damage over the last couple of turns. Um, but as you say... Chucky, if Chucky were to top take a sprint here, no, backstab's not what he needs. Backstab is not a sprint. No. I mean, one, there's nothing else he can do here. One tech that I was playing around with a bit yesterday uh, after the cast, and one tech that I think is actually really strong right now is mind control tech. Uh, it's, a, it's a literal tech. <laughs> uh, just because it's so powerful right now against a lot of the decks that are popular. 
Uh, it's really powerful against Zoo. It's really powerful against the de mid range demon. Um, it's powerful against Rogue because of Vala Teacher sometimes. Um, and it's powerful also against uh, Grim Patron Warrior. Which are yeah. a lot of popular decks. It's also so, can sometimes be powerful in in mirror matchups because sometimes druids can uh, can flood the board a little bit. Also paladins, uh, a lot of the like the it's strong out of a lot of like four out of the top five decks right now, and I've seen, been seeing players play with it, and I, I really like it. I'm not sure if Jab's running it, and I'm not sure if he, if it would even be relevant in this in this matchup or in this series, but I like to see that tech more out of players right now, and I think. Since players have had to choose an additional deck today, I think that would be a good card to actually bring. Yeah, I quite like the MC tech. I uh, When I was making the push from 15 to 5 in the ranks this season, I played a lot of Zoo. And I actually find that because I was running into so much Zoo, MC tech was actually a really good tech card for that mirror match. And it meant you were able, that I was able to maintain the win streaks a little bit better because those mirror matches can be so coin flippy. It can interrupt your streak and uh, can really mess with your laddering. But you can see here the... Sludge Belcher did come down, and Chucky was able to deal with it, but that's the kind of stabilization card that Jap needs here to really lock Chucky out of this game when he can't draw cards. Lothab could be pretty good, but he does have Doctor Boom in hand. What's going through his head right now is he's thinking, if I play Lothab, do I lose? Um, if I play Lothab, do... Um, am I going to need that body later on? After a board clear? Like, right now... <clears throat> Right now, if he just plays Lothab, it's most likely going to die. It'll just die to Azure Drake Hero Power. But also, um, if he doesn't play Lothab, there's a chance that he dies from Force Nature Savage Roar. Um, also, if he plays Lothab, then he doesn't have any creatures in his hand to place on the board, even after he would have a board clear in that situation. So, And the, the Lothab coming down from Jab here is really going to hurt. So that means that even if Chucky does draw the swipe, he's out of this game. And that's that's going to be it, right? He's got Force of Nature plus swipes. So that's 10. He has 7 on board. That's going to be lethal for Jab. So Jab's actually going to go out to 3-1 lead here, probably. Yeah. That is that is lethal next turn. Um, yeah. Uh, that's one of the risks of sort of going <laughs> all in like that with the, with the Rogue. But... Sometimes you have to play with the, the hand that you're given. And the hand that he was given said, it was it was whispering in his ear and it said, go all in. Because he, he had Edwin Van Cleef, he had double prep, double prep Violet, Violet teacher. teacher. At that point, you basically have to say, hey, you have to have swipe and keeper or you're going to lose the game. Because you see at the end there, even though Chalky didn't have any card draw besides one Phantom Dives, he still put Jab to eight health. With a South Sea deckhand in his hand, there was a possibility that he could have drawn into oil next turn, and just won the game. Won the game from there. So um, he he played that just about as well as he could have, given the circumstances. But sometimes when you make those risky plays by trying to make a big bang cleave and putting literally everything on board, emptying your hand to make a lot of one one tokens and an Edwin Van Cleave, sometimes it gets keepered and swiped. It's a metaphor yeah. for life. Sometimes you sometimes you, you put your all into everything. Sometimes you, you just give it everything, and then your life just gets Keeper of the Grove and swiped. Yeah, it's really difficult. Chucky, as you say, did get him really low, and he kind of just run out of steam or just drew, draw into more steam uh, when he needed. But Chucky's going to switch back to his warrior now. And, of course, Jab has his mid-range hunter left. So Jab's going to have three chances to get a win with this hunter. Um I don't think the matchups are that terrible for Chucky. I think, again, we haven't. I, I personally haven't seen enough Grim Patron Warrior to know definitively what the matchups are. Um, I think this could be. It all depends on how these two decks draw um, and what they can draw into to be able to uh, to take the early initiative. I think Freeze Mage and Rogue are reasonably good for Chucky against mid range hunters, so he'll be feeling pretty confident uh, if he can win that. If he can win this matchup, I think. Chucky wants to get this difficult match out of the way. You know, he has to get a win with the Grim Patron against the Hunter at some point at, the, uh, at this stage. So you might as well queue into it first. As you say, queue into maybe your weakest deck um, or even the deck that you're just not as comfortable with. I mean, there, there's probably no way that Chucky can be as comfortable with Grim Patron as he can with Freeze Mage or Rogue just because it's not existed for as long. So this is probably, this is most likely his weakest deck here. 
I like Grim Patron Warrior against Hunter. Maybe not so much against Midrange Hunter, but if you think about Warrior in general against aggressive Hunters, they basically have all the anti-aggro tools that a Control Warrior has, like Whirlwind, Cruel Taskmaster, um, the Unstable Ghoul, the weapons early on. And then you think about it, they can actually get to a point where they can race. The only thing is that usually when they're going for their combos, they're flooding the board, which might make it weak to unleash. But it doesn't make it weak to unleash to clear the board. It makes it weak to unleash burst. Yeah. So I I like it. Against Midrange Hunter, it's a little bit weaker just because you're going up against larger creatures. So a lot of times you can't combo off, and a lot of times your anti-aggro tools are useless. Um, but uh, overall against Hunter, I think it's pretty good. Uh, this hand is okay for Chalky. He has to really be um, smart with his weapons. Uh, he actually has Death's Bite plus Inner Rage, Grim Page, and Cool Taskmaster. So he can actually make a huge turn 7 play with that by summoning just a whole bunch with all those all those activators. Jab on oh, the other hand oh, actually has well. a... Yeah, Jab on the other hand actually has an amazing curve. He has Animal Companion into Pilot and Shredder into Stranglethorn Tiger. Stranglethorn Tiger was actually a card that was put into mid-range hunters a lot in the past because of its synergy with Houndmaster. Before BGH was played a lot, um, before the days of Dr. Boom, getting a um, a turn 5 Stranglethorn Tiger followed by a Houndmaster on it the next turn, you were guaranteed a 7-7. Seven, seven. If you could play that safely in a game, you basically won. I don't think that's the first time I've seen a, an Ancient Watcher come down from Jab off a Pilot and Shredder. That's not the greatest card that he was looking for. It does have a silence in this deck, so maybe later on, but at the moment that's definitely not going to be impactful. As you say, it does just curve into that Stranglethorn Tiger. Double Unleash though for Jab, and actually if Chucky were to go for a, a big play, you could get Double Unleashed and that would be some pretty scary burst. L good thing you include that Leok off the board first before potentially getting Unleashed. Yeah. This is this is why I love Grim Page and Warrior because you can make so many big combos so early in the game, and if he does, if he can't find a way to clear off these Grim Patrons, he basically just loses. He's had 19 health. He's had 19 health with 9, 14, 15, 16 damage on the board showing. He can't unleash because he needs to be able to clear, and he can't clear with unleash because every time you throw a hound into one of these Grim Patrons. It yeah, he can, only clear, he can only clear two of these. He can't even clear two. He can only clear one and the Cruel Taskmaster. Well, he can clear two with the Stranglethorn Tiger, yeah. But not yeah, with Unleash the Hounds. Yeah, he can, he can clear two off the board here. You can't um, even juggler it's... Unleash. Like, that's usually the go-to board clear for for hunters in general. Hunter... The problem is as well, though, if, if you if you Unleash, and you even even if you manage to clear two with Unleash, you leave... Three, you leave two, at least two hounds up, which can be used for the Grim Patrons to, to proc off. So really, Unleash is pretty bad in this situation because he has the Warzone Commander as well, and he, Chucky could could completely fill his board with Unleashed hounds, even if you Unleash here really sensibly and clear the the Taskmaster. Oh, I don't know about the Knife Juggler. I guess uh, I guess the Knife Juggler is good because uh, I don't know. I don't know why the Knife Juggler is good. Oh god. I'm not convinced. Oh god. Okay, oh. well, that's about the best juggles that he could have possibly gotten. Literally the best juggles. Alright, now he oh. can Warsong Commander, Whirlwind, and uh, Battle Rage, which is really strong because he's going to summon two more Grim Patrons. He can actually summon a lot more. Um, actually, he might... No, he has Lethal. Yeah, he has a, no, yeah, no, he has here. No, he doesn't. Because right. he's going to have to use the two damage. The the most Grim Patrons he can, su he can summon and attack with is five. Because in order to summon two more Grim Patrons, he has to attack into these Unleash the Hounds. And then those Grim Patrons aren't going to be able to go. So, <clears throat> actually, the most Grim Patrons that he can summon and attack with is four. So the, the most damage he'd be able to do to face here uh, 15. would be 15. Yeah, because he could equip the Fire War Axe. Well, this does create a pretty scary board that you can use for next turn. Oh, yeah. I mean, he doesn't even have to take out this uh, Knife Juggler because the Knife Juggler could just mean, could just spell problems. But, I mean, he doesn't want to risk having those poor juggles like he did last time. He's thinking about it, uh, but he does have Whirlwind, so he wants to summon the fresh ones. 
Yeah, and he's gonna battle rage oh, and just draw God, the cards. This... See, this is Chalky has just had the stars aligned for his Grim Patriot Warriors. That battle rage came just on time, and, and there Jab you go. concedes. <laughs> Yeah, the, I, Jab sees the writing on the wall there. There's nothing he can do. Uh, and Chucky gets a win with that Grim Patriot Warrior. So it's going to be 3-2 to two in the series. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chucky's going to have his Mage and his Rogue left against this Midrange Hunter. I actually like Chucky's chances here. I think the Freeze Mage can be a really good matchup against the Midrange Hunter. I think the Rogue can be really good as well if you can clear the board and get the right tools early on. Uh, this is actually not a bad position for Chucky and Jab. That mid-range hunter actually could end up being a bit of a liability, but if Jab loses this series, he's going to have lost four games with the mid-range hunter. It's a bold move. I mean, I said, I said it earlier, I just don't think mid-range hunter is as strong. But if there is any player that's going to succeed with mid-range hunter, it is Jab. Um, he's known for being a specialist in hunter and shaman. And I joked about it yesterday, I joked about it on Friday. Calling yourself a hunter specialist is you're probably not going to gain a lot of respect from people that don't know much more about you. But Midrange Hunter is actually a really tough deck to play. You don't just go phase because you have to play a lot of a big board control role early on. And there actually are a lot of other midrange decks that are just straight up stronger than Hunter. And you can tell the inconsistencies of Midrange Hunter's draw. You, you need early drops. And if you don't get early drops, then it defeats the purpose of playing Hunter in the first place because you're going to be behind. Your hero power can't be used as like a comeback mechanic. It's very one. The, the deck is very one-dimensional in itself, so uh, the inconsistency of it is what makes it not as good. And you, you can tell he's the only player that's playing mid-range hunter. There's a lot of people playing hunter, and he's the only one without the face variation. He's the only one that that is not so much inclined to point his arrow at the facial region. Well, Chucky's going to go to the rogue here. He does have to win a game with the Rogue and then a game with the Freeze Mage. This is going to be his second attempt at winning a game with the uh, Rogue. It lost to the Druid in game number four. Uh, yeah, that's right. I think. Yes. So this is game six. I'd written down five, but I meant six. Hmm. Yeah. There we go. So it's going to be Hunter versus Rogue. A lot of golden heroes from both these players I've noticed in this series so far. Yeah, there we are. They both play the game a whole heck of a lot. I think they're both they're both uh, two of the full time players. They're both players that at the beginning of the year said we're gonna try and do Hearthstone full time, which is a bold move. It's it's really bold. I mean, putting your life on hold to try and um, to try and make it big in such a volatile game environment. Like you're you're not guaranteed success even if you're one of the best players. You have to work really hard to build your brand. Uh, you have to work really hard to sort of build up yourself as a good player because you're not guaranteed tournament results. Even if you're the best player, the nature of a card game is that sometimes you're just going to lose and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, absolutely. So I respect players like that. Well, the, the Chucky does get the sprint now, the sprint that he needed so desperately in that Druid game uh, is in his hand now and does have a prep as well. So turn four prep sprint. We're not going to see Chucky running of cards anytime soon like he did in that Druid match. Yeah. Most of the time he gets Hunters, you really just don't have time to sprint. Because wasting a whole turn doing nothing, not wasting it, but spending a whole turn doing nothing for to the board can sometimes be your death sentence. But of course, Midrange Hunter, it actually is a little bit better. Unfortunately, Jab, once again, with this Hunter, is stuck with a handful of secrets. Two secrets in his first six cards, which is not what he wants. No, it's really bad. So he is going to go ahead and play one of them. And we're going to just see the, in fact, coin prep sprint on turn three. This is what he, but this is what the rogue needs to win this matchup. The rogue just needs lots and lots of answers um, and lots and lots of burst. Yeah. So we see the deadly poison, double oil, blade flurry is an insane amount of damage Yeah. Uh, in the hand of jab. I think it's lots of lots of answers or lots of lots of burst. <laughs> Because if you have burst, we saw yesterday, you can just win. You don't even need to deal with the board. Sometimes it, in this matchup, it just comes down to a race. It just comes down to who can do 30 damage first. And if you have sprint in your hand early on, most of the time as the rogue player, you're going to be able to do 30 damage first. Rogues can do 30 damage over like two turns. Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, you can dagger up double tinkers 
and then that's a huge amount of damage and then you can blade flurry and then you can dagger deadly poison and just so much damage this is awkward though yeah there's not a great turn here i think look about the i think that's an earthen ring right in the far left bottom left yeah um which i guess is not terrible i also think deadly poison is not terrible here to take out this knife juggler but he really values keeping that dagger fresh so he might deadly poison oh it's tough i actually think he might because he see because he has the double oil and he's really thinking about these big blade plays he might deadly poison here take out the knife juggler and then refresh his dagger straight away so he can do something with tinker sharp sword oil next turn he's actually just gonna just gonna use the tinkers straight away and not attack with it so that's an interesting choice from Chucky. I'm, it's one of, one of those plays where you think he's he's obviously thinking like four or five turns ahead of how he wants to play out all this damage. Yeah. Um, and we can't quite see what his line of thinking is, obviously. No, I think he wants to just make a huge weapon and be able to clear the board and burst at the same time. Because there's there if you think about it, there's not... There wasn't a clean way he could deal with both. And if you're not going to deal with both, there's really no way to deal with one. Because throwing that three damage into the knife juggler, which you know is going to do three damage next turn anyway... It's not good, especially since you have a Blade Flurry in your hand, so you know it's just going to get caught in that crossfire anyway. Yeah, Blade Flurry is just so destructive when you've got a massive dagger. It's one of those things where you think, where often you don't quite realize how much a Blade Flurry hits you straight away. You think, oh, my board's cleared. Oh, I also took eight damage to face. Oh, this is really bad. Yeah. Savannah Hymen in hand, though, for turn six as well, and that's going to die to a Blade Flurry as well, so. Going to take out the Sludge Belcher here, which is. Pretty good. Takes a takes a knife to the face. So. <laughs> this is so awkward because I there's no way that he can clear everything off the board. There's going to be two one ones left over, uh, and he doesn't have enough mana to phantom knives. Um, yeah, he's, he's going to eviscerate the one two, which he's throwing so much damage into just basically nothing. He's going to be able to do six damage to face here and clear the board, but he's already at fifteen. And the Savannah's about to come down. Oh, he has sap for that. Savannah's actually something that you like to see. You you want to play against Midnight Hunters more because they, they play a lot slower. So you can sap things like Sludge Belcher or Savannah High Main, or you can even sap Powder Shredders early on to just block some damage. Like, I've been in situations before playing Oral Rogue where my my best turn four play is like Violet Teacher's Prep Sap because you're creating a 3 5 2 one ones and you, you've just pretty much taking all Take of the momentum board. yeah and so this is wow the doctor boot came out so fast that it didn't even have time to hit the board i always find that so funny when you're watching spectator mode and that happens when they obviously top take things and play it really quickly it happens but it, it's just like the uh the giant eight from the tutorial and it shows that, that that kind of that still exists somewhere in the hearthstone code that can break into sometimes yeah i feel like we should have actual cards that did that there, there are some really cool things in the tutorial that are that aren't actually implemented in the game, like the bit where Cho levitate the hero levitates above and you can't hit it, mm -hmm. which I guess is kind of the same as Malganus, but I kind of like it. Oh, he gets to proc the freezing trap with the one one. <laughs> That's pretty useful, I guess. Yeah, but he has he has eviscerate his fan of knives here. Yeah, he can fan of knives eviscerate and SI agent, which is yeah. a really strong play. And the, these boom bots are most likely to hit one ones. Uh, his Violet Teacher is pretty much safe. Oh, three damage to face, though, is actually uh, quite a bit. Chalky is actually going to have to set up a couple turn lethal because being at 12 health is actually dangerous. It's not it's not quite as dangerous as, as being against the face hunter because usually it doesn't have enough as much burst. But Jap's hand's actually pretty bad. Freezing Trap, not good against Rogue. Savannah High Room right now is, is a, a death sentence because... It can just get sapped again. Well, really it doesn't risky. have a second sap. It doesn't have a second sap at hand, thankfully. But there are also, there are also ways to deal with this. And there's a deadly poison, Tinker's oil in hand. Deadly poison is such a great activator for Tinker's sharp sword oil as well. It's one of the reasons why oil roll could just have these huge swingy turns. Is the synergy of deadly poison into Tinker's oil? But there's um, there's anti synergy on the board with there oil is teacher. that is the big risk of oil roll is hitting the oil onto two apprentices so what would it what would be the chance it would be a, th uh, a one th one in three chance 
that the oil would hit somewhere you didn't want it to. Yeah. <clears throat> I think he wants to load that here and probably sack the Violet Teacher. It seems weird, but... Um... He wants to oh. Earthen Ring as well. Okay, if he Earthen Rings, then he's okay. He can go face. Uh, but being at 10 health with a high main on the board and 9 mana next turn for his opponent uh, to work with, he yeah. don't... It's the only thing that keeps him alive, that low theb, because obviously oh kill goodness. command. Um, I think we'll probably just see the Houndmaster here. But that's going to feel pretty bad. This is tough. What is Jab going to do here? Can't kill command. I mean, he could kill command to take the low theb off the board, but then. And then run the Savannah into the, the Violet Teacher. So that would take it down to. Eight damage on board plus the one from the dagger, so he would still be dead, but he would be clear on board. I'm not sure what else he can do. I think I think he is just dead here. I think I don't think Violet Teacher is the right target to kill because Violet, you want the anti synergy. You want the anti synergy, and also um, he, by killing Violet Teacher, you're not taking any more immediate damage off the board than you would by killing Earth Ring Farseer and SI Agent. Because those one ones aren't going to be able to attack next turn, and they could make a potential unleash the hounds play stronger if that's what follows up, and it makes oil. So if you're going to kill anything, it would probably be one of the three threes. But I mean, he might not even go for it. I don't, I don't like silencing the the yeah. here. It makes the plays a lot more consistent. It makes yeah, oil plays a lot more consistent. I think you're absolutely right. I think silencing the violent teacher is a bad move. I know you just want to put as many things on the board as possible, but. You really want to to see the the Tinker's Oil going on to a, yeah, a sleeping that's... apprentice is yeah. one of the ways that you survive here. Uh, it's probably the only way you survive. Well, no, I, he was dead anyway, even without the. I, I'm pretty sure he was dead even without the first iteration, the minion iteration of the of the. See, he had four, five, six overkill. So, uh, yeah, so Chucky's gonna tie it up. So we're gonna go to a game seven first series of the day, game seven already. It's gonna be Jabs. Signature mid range hunter versus Chalky's maybe not so signature freeze mage. And like I say, if Jab does win, does lose this, he's gonna have lost four games with that mid range hunter, and Chalky is gonna have won four of oh, four games against the mid range hunter. So that's gonna feel pretty bad. Yeah. And the mid range hunter will literally have cost Jab this matchup because all of Chalky's wins will have come against it. That's that's gonna be bad for someone who says he's a hunter expert. So well, Jab's going to be trying to avoid that here. Well, Chalky is also a hunter expert. So if you're expecting a lot of hunter and you know that you're the hunter expert, by bringing decks that inherently counter hunter, you're basically one-upping all the other hunter experts in the tournament. Well, this is going to be game number seven of our first semifinal. One game to decide. The mid-range hunter versus the freeze mage. Jab or Chalky? Who is going to the Kingdom for Charity Easter Edition final? This could cost them. This is going to cost them at least a thousand dollars losing this one game. Uh, it could well cost them two thousand dollars. So this is pretty high stakes for one game of Hearthstone. Oh yeah, for sure. And both these players also. I, I mean, I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. Um, Jab maybe more, but they're up and comers. They again, I, I said they they gave up a lot to sort of become full time Hearthstone players, full time Hearthstone streamers. And uh, the, both of their streams, they're, they're, they sit on like the, the second row of the, the Twitch Hearthstone streams. Uh, Chalky, he's been working really hard lately. He was the, the first player to, to get those, the Twitch race for Black Rock Mountain for two of the wings. They really want to have that breakout win. Yeah, I mean, it, these guys are both looking, as you say, for their breakout. They're really, really hungry for this. I, I think Chalky, he's not a, a guy who gets kind of hot gets worried by these things or agitated by these things but that loss in the final of the ESL legendary series has got to be in the back of his mind that he got so so close to that first major breakthrough and lost out to to silent storm who was a relative unknown and here he has another chance to take his, his first title he's only two wins away from taking his first major title in hearthstone jab also has a, a chance to not only stake a claim for himself but stake a claim for his team as a whole Hearthletics is a, a name they won the muzzy winning the pinnacle four really put the, the team out there. And if Jab was able to win the the King win for charity just after the Pinnacle Four, that'd be a pretty huge uh, pretty huge couple of weeks for the team. Definitely. Chalky needs draw. 
He's got a lot of health gain. He's got some burn in his hand, but he has no draw. Tell me the freeze mage slogan again, TJ. Draw, freeze, burn. In that exactly. order, most of the time. Unless you're yeah, playing exactly. against another freeze mage, then it's just draw, burn. You skip the freeze part. Just spell slingers. Yep, so we see the huffer coming in for jab. That's pretty good in the cause of block poppage. Yep. And he gets to that armor as well. <laughs> yeah. He's going to have to armor up again. This is actually a pretty good hand for Jab, I'd say. Uh, he's got just about anything. He's got sounds for Doomsayer. He's got really sticky uh, but powerful bodies in the Paladin Shredder and the Haunted Creeper. And uh, he's got Eagle Horn Bow as well. So um, those are all the things that you want in this matchup. Double Quick Shot is burst <laughs> is, is pretty intense. Double Quick Shot in mid range Hunter is pretty interesting. It's I'm not sure about it. I think a lot of people like it in... Uh... Some people like it in Face Hunter. We've seen other uh, being played in other places today, the double quick shot Face Hunter. But it's kind of a card that divides opinion, really. I think uh, Kaldi told me he thinks it's the best card in the Black Grove Mountain set. Green Sheep thinks it's straight up bad. So it, it divides opinion, really, among pro players. I think it's good. It's it's a Frost Bolt. It's a Frost Bolt that doesn't freeze. It's a Frost Bolt, which is a secondary effect. If Hunters had Frost Bolt, would they take it? Yeah, probably. Um, I think it, I definitely think it's bet it's it's good rather than bad. I'm just not yeah. sure how I feel about two copies, particularly mid range hunter. I don't know what you're cutting to make room for it. Um, I guess the hunter burst is good in this matchup. Mid range hunter usually has a couple more cards to to fool around with, and um, I, I said before the inconsistency of draws in mid, mid range hunter is one of the fallbacks. So early on in the game, if you can't find a creature and you really need to take out something super important, like it gets mech mage, the mech warper or like a knife juggler, something like that, and you just don't have a drop to be able to answer it. Um, it just makes your opening hands a little bit more consistent, and it also makes your end turns a little more consistent. You can add in three damage of burst with two mana, which sometimes can be what you need. I think it's a pretty versatile card. It's more versatile than people would think at first glance. A lot of people were saying, oh, well, you'll never get the advantage of the card draw. It's a bad card because the card draw is inconsistent. Well, card draw is just like a bonus. Three damage for two mana is decent, and the card draws is a bonus if you're completely out of cards. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. I think the, the card draw is just a bonus that you're not going to see too often, but the uh, the three damage for two mana is really good. So Thorison getting silenced here does get one benefit from it, so he has the nine mana Pyroblast, the five mana Blizzard as well. But this is kind of tough, and this is one of the reasons why Midrange Hunter can present some problems for the freeze mage is that the clears can often be really ineffective so we're going to see a blizzard here but the blizzard is actually going to take that one two spider and replace it with effectively two two of power on the board uh both the, sh the shredder and the belcher are also staking minions so it's one of the reasons why midrange hunter can be a little bit better against uh classes with board clear yeah Alright, so mostly when you're playing aggro decks, playing Lothab as soon as you get it, or on curve, is the right play to make. Because against Freeze Mage, it basically takes a turn away from them. Most of the time they won't be able, they don't have they won't have creatures to play, and a lot of times if they do have creatures to play, they have spells that they can use to back it up. Like Doomsayer is great when you have a freeze to back it up. The only things the creatures that you can play are like Mad Scientist and Loot Hoarder that are going to be good on a low up turn. And he just doesn't have that. So this is going to put a, a pretty big dent in the plans of of Chalky and allow Jab to pile on a lot of damage. You see how much damage he's going to have next turn? It's just absolutely ridiculous. I think yeah, Frostova I mean... has to come out here. Even though he wants to be able to draw in a situation like this, he can't afford to take that much damage the next turn without a secret up. Yeah, this is the thing. Is he, he can either Frost Nova or Arcane Intellect here. Doing both this turn would have been absolutely great, but he doesn't have the ability to... It doesn't have that luxury because of the low theb, so he can be really greedy and really risky and go with the Arcane Intellect, or he can go for the Frost Nova. I think you're right. I think you have to Frost Nova, but also we've seen from Chucky that he sometimes does go for the, the balls the all-in play, but he's going to go with the Frost Nova. There's a Houndmaster, not particularly effective at this point. And what are we going to see? We're going to see just quick shot face. 
Quick yeah. shot face. Yep. Just the one though. <clears throat> He's got protection on the board with the in the form of secrets. Uh, one of these is gonna have to get freezing trapped. Uh, he does have more freeze though. Blizzard is gonna buy him even more time. And now he's going to be able to pop the Paladin Shredder as well. Most likely kill whatever's going to come out of it. Pint Size Summoner, yeah, that's going to get eaten up by a Blizzard. Yeah, that's that's pretty perfect. So, actually, something like a, a River Croc or, or anything with three health, with two health, with more than two health would have been really a uh, little bit frustrating for Chucky. But that two health, that's going to be pretty good for the Blizzard. And he's thinking whether or not he wants to. He's, yeah, he's gonna use his Thoris in here to clear this first this first Belcher body, but he's gonna get frozen unfortunately. So he's gonna be able to play the Thoris in again, which might help in the long run. But only two snakes coming out as well. He's thinking about is he gonna go for Doomsayer as well here? I guess if he procs the trap, then yeah, um, it means he was going for the Doomsayer because it, it, if he wasn't planning on using Doomsayer, he would have procced the trap with the Mad Scientist. There would be no reason to, to proc the, the trap with the Emperor Thorsan unless he was planning on playing Doomsayer. Because this way he's guaranteed to get the Mad Scientist uh, killed. Um, and doesn't leave the doesn't uh, leave anything on the board for Doomsayer to kill unnecessarily. Exactly. Can't play the Thorsan again here, but he might just opt to draw. He has to draw. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no reason to play Thorsan here. I mean, he could for the body on the board, but at this stage, you kind of want to get... Oh my god, this is... <sighs> He's just really, really taken by the idea of an 8-mana Pyroblast. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> the body is great, but... Um, I don't know. I think know. you're right that you probably wanted to draw there. I mean, I guess he's not guaranteed to have anything to play if he draws, which is the big thing. But it's still... It, in a turn where you're not developing anything, he doesn't have enough burn in his hand to be able to win the game. Let's see what's going to come out of this. Huffer, uh-oh. Houndmaster as well. Mm -hmm. So how much damage is that? A lot. <laughs> Three, six, seven. Six, uh, it's 12. 12 damage total. It'd be quick shot. It's 13 damage. He can't pop the block, though. That's really frustrating. One off being able to pop the block. Yeah. Actually, I don't even know if that's block. It could be Ice Barrier. Uh, he got that from the Mad Scientist. I don't know if we've checked that yet. I think we've seen... Have we not seen both barriers early on? Oh, yeah, yeah. We did see both barriers in the hand early on. Okay. You are correct. So that is a block. There you go. He could put him to one, but I don't know if he wants to put him to one. He might want to use that quick shot as a draw mechanic. Uh, because the only way he'd be able to put him to one here is if he uses quick shot as well. He can put him to two. So, well, yeah, he's going to put him to two with the hero power. Which, I think that's just as good. Yeah, he could pop the block next turn, even if his whole board and his face gets frozen with the uh, with the hero power. This is not enough burn. He's got 16 damage in his hand, and that 16 damage would have to come over the course of two turns. No Alex Straza. Yeah, this is pretty rough for Chucky, obviously. 29 health for the Hunter versus 2 health for the Mage with no Alex Straza. There's the <laughs> anti heal bot, though. Clutch. And Arcane Intellect. Super clutch. Yeah, he's got an anti heal bot, Arcane Intellect, and then trade into the Huffer. And that will leave... He would, his block would actually still get pop next turn, even with anti heal bot. So I don't even know if that's the right play. So does he have enough even on? So yeah, so there's ten. Yeah, there's ten damage on board. So there's exactly enough even on board without the quick shot to pop the block with the anti heal bot. So there's actually no way that he can play this turn without getting his block pop next turn. What he might he arcane intellects and draws and in, nope, he can't. Uh, he could use the ice lands. That's true. And he could, uh, if he ice lances the Houndmaster, he could. Uh, he, oh, using the fireball. I'm not sure I like this. I guess it's clear. It does clear most damage off the board, but Doomsayer. This is really rough. I think Chalky's in quite a bit of trouble here. Block is going to get popped next turn or this turn. He's going to have to arcane intellect into block the next turn or draw into Alex Straza. Alex Straza might be his only out in this game. Oh, this is really tough. And the Savannah High meme, that's such a sticky target. Even if it gets killed, it's going to summon those two twos. When, when you're at that low health, every point of damage is going to matter. 
Yeah, I actually think there is an argument for putting that the high main out here because you will get those two minions on board. Well, I mean, what what else are you gonna do? I guess he, I, I would say he could clear the doomsayer. Yeah. Yeah. He can pop the block and clear the doomsayer here, yep. which is pretty crucial. So yeah, quick shot's gonna come down. Oh, he's actually gonna. This kill might the be Thorson. better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he's gonna kill the Thorson. Gets those two minions on board, has five damage in hand. He actually, yeah, he has nine. The heal bot takes him up to ten, but he doesn't have a second block, so I think he probably has to heal bot Arcane Intellect and then if, see when he gets off the Arcane Intellect first, obviously. But I think it's probably gonna be heal bot and he can freeze both of these two. Oh, that's a big pickup. Wow. Explosive, Explosive sheep. Explosive sheep, ping, and anti heal bot is going to keep him alive. He's going to be at 10 health with 5 damage showing on the board. That could be pretty crucial. We'll see what he draws here. Another high mean? Wow. Oh, man. Yeah, you, you just have to sort of go all in here if you're jab. Oh, this could be close. Chucky's going to have a couple more draws to draw into Ice Block and, like, some extra burn. He's got to be yeah. able to do 24 damage. Right now, he has 10 damage from Pyro Blast. He's 8 18. damage from Ice Lances if he can... Well, not really 18. If he can draw Frostbolt. If he can draw Frostbolt, then it's 21. 21. And another Fireball or another... Fro Do they, I think he has one Fireball and Frostbolt left in the deck? Mm -hmm, I believe so. But I don't think he's really going to be able to kill him unless he draws Alex Draws and is able to use it on himself after a turn where his block is popped. The Blood Friend Raptor is actually pretty crucial as well. Every little point of damage is going to count here from Jab. Well, there's card draw. <sighs> yeah. I, mean, I guess he has to... He has to pop it. He has to proc the Acolyte. And then... He can either freeze both minions with Ice Lances. Or he can double Ice Lance his own Mad Scientist. And hope he gets Ice Block. And he would get Ice Block, right? Because he's played Double Barrier. So he would get Ice Block doing that. But that would be two pretty key cards used up well what he might do is uh once he pings his um his acolyte if he doesn't draw anything good he'll mad scientist and then uh double ice lance the targets and just hope that he doesn't draw into three points of direct damage fireball that's some direct damage but uh, he can he can actually trade the the anti heal bot into the blood friend raptor and then freeze the high main that keeps him alive for another turn. Yeah. So and that that actually allows him to fireball face as well, and start building the da taking the damage down. He can yeah he can double ice lance as well. Yeah, this basically makes it so that kill command is the only way to win. This sets up for a next turn lethal if he can't clear anything off the board. Web spinner. Not it. That's game. He's got lethal serious? in hand. He's got 15 damage. 10 damage from the power. Oh, man. Three from the anti kill bot. One from the Acolyte of Pain. And one from the ping. <laughs> that's it. That's insane. That's He's going to win this series. And that's exact four, lethal. Four games Seven lost in one series with mid range hunter. That is. Wow. That's really disappointing for Jab, but incredibly well played by Chalky, setting up that lethal the following turn. That's about the only way that he could have played that and been able to come on, on top of that game. Because direct damage, there was a, so many cards in Jab's set that could that could deal direct damage. He had second Eagle Horn Bow, uh, he had Kill Command. Um, he only needed basically those two cards, and he would have had a couple turns to draw into it if he didn't set up a next turn lethal. So, wow. Chalky is going to be the first player to move on to the finals after a really impressive series being down three to one and then coming back and being able to take out mid range hunter three games in a row. Yeah, that's absolutely huge. Uh, <laughs> wow. Jab really unfortunate. As you say, losing four games with that hunter. I mean, I, you know, you don't want to say it's a liability in terms of being a weak deck, but it certainly was the liability in terms of where the wins and losses came from because all of Chucky's wins in that matchup came against the mid range hunter. And yeah, that just, I guess, speaks to the, the strength of Chucky's lineup in this matchup. Um, but we're going to go to a quick break very shortly before we come back with our second semi-final between Tides of Time and Forsen. Forsen boys, get in here because Forsen's Grim Patron is Grim Forsen boys. 
are going to be making their way into the Twitch channel to watch a semi-final. But yeah, so Chucky's going to go to our final. Jab is going to finish. He's going to meet uh, the loser of Tides of Time versus Forsen in our third match of the day, the third place playoff. Yeah. Um, he's, it does get $500 for coming to the semifinals, so not a bad showing for, for Jab under any circumstances. Did very well to get this far. I do want to talk about some of the games that he played a little bit um, in, in this matchup. Jab, I don't think the mid-range hunter is as weak as what was represented in this series. One, Chucky had a lot of decks that were really good against mid-range hunter. Um, two, Jab uh, did not get any really strong openings with the mid-range hunter in any of the four games that he lost with it. He had, in three out of the four games, his hand was filled with um, like double freezing trap, stink trap, or just full of traps. So uh, I don't think it, it was as bad of a deck choice because it's actually done pretty well for him in the past. Uh, but I do think that Chalky played exceptionally well. And uh, you can tell Chalky's experience playing against Hunter, knowing decks, the Hunter decks inside and out, and uh, being able to, to, to make the right reads, especially at the end there, making sure that he Iceland's the face to get rid of one more target, or sorry, Firebolt the face and Iceland's both to make sure that he set up the next turn lethal. Really imp impressive stuff, but we'll see how Jab does in the, in the third place match, but I don't think he can be too upset with his performance in this tournament either way. Absolutely. So we're going to see one game more from each of these players. Chalky's going to our final. It'll be the end of the day. Jab is going to our third place matchup. But coming up next, we have our second semifinal. Tides of Time versus Forsen. We're going to go to a quick break, but make sure you check out the raffle while we do exclamation mark packs in the chat. Get you the link to the raffle. Make sure you make a donation to Child's Play as well to show your appreciation for this tournament. I say we're all here to raise this money for charity. So uh, do go make a donation as well. And we'll see you back here in eight minutes time. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Kingdom for Charity.